Today will be a rather short lecture. We will talk about the correlation and complementarity of wind and solar output. We already learned a lot about the different parameters of wind and solar power generation. The aim of energy transition is to achieve an uninterrupted power supply by renewables energies only. As a first step we want to see whether the combination of wind and solar is a step in the right direction. So we take a look at the correlation of those two. First step we think about how we describe the correlation mathematically. There's a so-called Pearson correlation coefficient. The Pearson correlation coefficient is abbreviated with a small r or sometimes you find a row. We take two parameters as an example x and y. For example for wind and solar, x for wind and y for solar. And this is a correlation coefficient as you see here. So we have on the top we have the differences. So xi is the sampled at the index e. For example if you start with the first data 1 and then you take the difference from the sample mean. Just a normal mean as you know it's just the sum of all samples and then divided by the numbers of samples. The same is for y dash. So we have here the differences of the actual value to the mean value multiplied by the other parameters also the actual value minus the mean value. Then on a lower part we have here the differences but here in square. So we have here the added up of the difference in square for x, all x from 1 to n. Also the same applies for y. So we have here from 1 to n also the difference is in square and then we build the square root of these sums and multiply it with each other. So we have here some examples for the correlation coefficients. First here on the right top side we see if there is no correlation. So x and y are completely independent. So the values here are scattered all over the quadrant here. If you have some small correlation for example 0 0.3 you see a tendency. So if x goes up y goes up also. Not strictly, there is a huge tolerance, a huge deviation to it, but in general. For a more firm correlation, for example R is 0 0.7, you see such a, a quite good correlation between those two values. More interesting in our case is the anti-correlation, so with negative correlation coefficient. So see here, if you go here to the lower left part, you see here R is minus 0 0.7. So if y is high, x is low, and if x is high, y is low. This is particularly interesting for us because we want to create complementarity. So we have lots of solar power, we don't need a lot of wind power. And If we don't have a lot of solar power, we want more wind power. So this would be the preferable case for us if we talk about wind and solar. Correlated here if you go to the upper part again would be not very helpful because if we would have lots of solar energy we would have in the same time lots of wind energy and vice versa. If we don't have solar we won't have wind either. Here you see some examples. These are some measurements taken in the UK. So you have the relative solar power in red here with some tolerances. So this is the dark shadow is here in this tolerance band of 50% of the values. Same applies for wind power. So you have here this dark shadow is the tolerance band for wind power with 50% of all the values. If you can extend it here this is, would be a 75% and this would be a 90%. But you clearly see the tendency, it's anti-correlated and that is really helpful. So in summer, May, June, July, maybe August, you have a lots of solar power in the UK and less wind power. While if you in winter we have little solar power, same as in Germany, but more wind power. So 
this combination of wind and solar is rather helpful. This study even went further. So you have here for the different months and the different seasons. So if you go to the right side, you see here the correlation in winter. So you have more wind speed as you see here on this green curve here and a little solar. And the same applies also for summer and so on. So you have here in spring, it's less correlated. So this is a bit more critical. Here you see the overall Pearson correlation coefficients, which is minus 0 0.402. There's another study did that for Italy, but also in geographical terms. So it doesn't take only one point like we have here in Britain or which was generalized all over the countries. So we have here the different location. So we see here on the left side a map of Italy with the topography of the different wind speeds. So red is very high wind speeds over the year. We come to the different time frames a bit later. So, but this is uh, over the year. We have here, if you go to the coasts, we have high wind speeds, in particular in the mountain areas. And on the right side, you see the different irradiance values. So you have here in northern Italy, sure, less irradiance and you have more in the south. It's an exception here. Or if you go to the Riviera, there is more sun power all over the year, even if it's quite north. So we have here the different uh, correlation coefficients. How much is it correlated if you go to the left side? So as I already mentioned, uh, we want to have a negative correlation because this is rather favorable for us. And these are the dark blue areas. So here it makes sense to install wind and solar power at the same time because they are anti-correlated. The red areas are correlated, so they are more critical. So you would have solar and wind at the same time. Additionally, on the right part, it's considered that we want to have a certain minimum value. It doesn't help if there's only a very small amount of solar energy and very small amount of wind power. So on the right side, areas are excluded, which offer a lower energy of 1000 kilowatt hours or one megawatt hour per kilowatt peak installed. You see there's a lot of it is exempted. So it's just basically here on the northern part and on the mountain area. There are some areas which have both anti-correlation and have a sufficient power resource. Especially in Sardinia, it looks quite favorable. Only some small part is see them red. We have some correlation between wind and solar. This is now for the daily correlation. Just before it was annual correlation. We see a bit similar here. So here we see all over and here we take off the areas or the regions where we have below one megawatt hour per year per kilowatt peak installed and you have about the same characteristics. Also if you go to the hourly correlations of wind and solar, so you see here a bit different pattern. Here you have more red areas, so you have a positive correlation between wind and solar. This is also be considered and here also you have still some red areas which offer a positive correlation between wind and solar. As I mentioned, it is a quite short lecture. Therefore, we want to extend the homework a little bit. So first question is, an investor can select between three sites with the following wind speed distributions. The site A offers a constant wind speed during the whole year of a velocity of eight meters per second. Site B offers 50% of the year 7 meters per second, the other 50% 9 meters per second. Site C offers 50% of the year 6 meters per second and the other 50% 10 meters per second. If you take a look at this number, you can see that site A, B and C, they offer the same average wind speed. First, it's clear you have eight meters per second, but if you add up here, site B, seven meters per second and nine meters per second for equal 50% of the year, you also come to eight meters per second. For site C, you have six meters per second and 10 meters per second. So the average value is also eight meters per second. 
should make a drawing of those to visualize these different sides of the wind speed distribution. So on the x-axis you have the wind speed, on the y-axis you have the probability. Oh, this has mentioned already, what are the difference in average wind speeds? Considering an ideal wind energy converter, which side offers the best energy yield? So if you talk about ideal converter, it means a conversion efficiency of 100%. What are the relative yield differences between the sides? Taking the best side as a 100%. What would be the yield differences if the wind power converters would be ideal from 2 to 9 meters per second, but the power could not increase or wind speed higher than 9.5 meters per second? Come to saturation of the wind converter and then the power stays constant even at higher wind speeds. And would even cut off power at velocities of 20 meters per second. How would the result change if the total investment costs, means hardware costs, installation, maintenance for the site with the constant wind speed would be 12% lower? That's rather reasonable because this is less stressy for the mechanical infrastructure. What is the necessary Pearson correlation coefficient to allow for an uninterruptible power supply, the combination of wind and solar only? What options are possible if the Pearson correlation coefficient does not reach the desired value? Describe three different options. What measures are necessary to take advantage from a favorable temporal correlation that does not occur at the same location? So that was your homework. The next lecture will be more extensive. So you see here, this are already the past lectures. The next lecture will be about hydropower. The advantage of hydropower, it's constant power output, at least for some of the hydropowers, and we will discuss this next week. Thank you very much.